right, I'm gonna make a video about the Kirby Reichel trade. Oh, actually, we should wait until all the Leafs RFA news is in. One eternity later. Woo, it's just RFA news, man! You don't have to be James frickin' Bond about qualifying offers! Holy smart! I'm sorry, don't hurt me. Devils fans like, you having fun yet? All right, so the Leafs acquire Kirby Reichel from the Columbus Blue Jackets in exchange for Scott Harrington and a conditional fifth round pick. Harrington was one of the Leafs' 10 restricted free agents heading into this restricted free agency period. That number obviously got knocked down to nine because Reichel is not a free agent. The conditional fifth, by the way, is if Harrington gets plucked off of waivers. So if Columbus puts Harrington on waivers and someone takes him, the Leafs have to give up a fifth round pick. According to generalfanager.com, that pick has not been determined as to the year. Could be 2017, 18, 19? I'm not sure why. Now, losing Harrington was not shocking. He started last season with the Leafs. I thought he was doing okay, and then injuries kind of derailed the season. He went down to the Marlies, derailed hard, and was shut down early in the season, leaving a lot of Leaf fans going, hey, whatever happened to that guy? The answer, the Blue Jackets, or the Calder Cup winning Lake Erie Monsters, or someone who claims him off waivers. The guy is a second round pick, but the NHL can be very, what have you done for me lately, and he's gone. Incoming Kirby Reichel, former first round pick. Now, there have been trade rumors around Reichel for a long time. Time. If I remember correctly, I think the asking price or the assumed asking price was around a second round pick, which the Leafs sort of gave up, but sort of very didn't give up. One thing with Kirby Reichel that I haven't really seen discussed is it kind of adds to the Leafs draft weekend, that whole size narrative thing. The guy's 6'1", 213 pounds. I mean, there are bigger guys in hockey, but that's a pretty big boy. Now, unfortunately, numbers wise, kind of hard to get a hold of. Two goals, 10 assists for 12 points in 37 NHL games. Eh. Whatever. 27 points in 37 regular season AHL games and then only 6 points in 17 games during the Monsters Calder Cup run in a much more limited role. Now the Leafs have dumped tons of guys in recent years just basically giving them away in trades to open up roster spots and they just recently did not qualify Colin Smith, Sam Carrick or Stuart Percy which we will get to. So there's 3 roster spots gone. Although, asterisk, I should add, the Leafs can still re-sign those guys. They're just unrestricted free agents now. Now, the reason I brought all that up, Reichel has two more years left on his deal. And it's $863,000 per year. Not exactly cheap for an entry-level deal. Maybe it's not that important. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but that is definitely something the Leafs put value in, and they're letting Reichel eat up two years. I mean, to me, that says they really like the guy, doesn't it? Now, where does he start? The NHL or the AHL? A ploy, great question. You know, every year around this time, I just rack my brain going, oh, what is the Leafs lineup gonna look like? And it's pointless. I think that's called maturity. Dude, it's not even July 1st. We don't even know everyone who's gonna be under contract, let alone who's gonna be on what line. I mean, back in the day, I used to work in a ticket booth and we had so much receipt paper that was just wasted on me trying to figure out what all the Leafs lines would be. But that was because I had eight hours a day and I was bored. I can only imagine what it would be like if I was still doing that. Just stamp, go, stamp, go, stamp, go, stamp. Just line the walls of the booth with it, my boss storms in, like, what are you doing? I work, guys, leave me alone! Now, the Leafs qualifying offers and all that, uh, they're still not out, officially. Isn't that hilarious? It's been like 24 hours, they're still not official from the team. What grand secrets are you keeping? The deadline was 5 o'clock! Okay, it was, it was done. Every other team did it. Here's the final list, not from the Leafs, but from Chris Johnson, so that's definitely good enough. Peter Holland, qualified. Josh Levo, qualified. Mark Morinson, qualified. Connor Carrick, qualified. He's going to make the team out of camp. Uh, Frankie Corrado, qualified. Garrett Sparks, qualified. Only three guys out of nine, ten if you include Harrington, three guys out of nine were not qualified. Sam Carrick, not really surprised. Colin Smith, I wouldn't have done it, but not really surprised. And Stuart Percy, surprised. I mean, if you're a Leafs RFA, a prospect kind of on the fritz, this was not a good time for you to be that. Because of the Leafs rebuild and the fact that so many young guys are going to come in from junior this year and next, some guys have to go. Sam Carrick, feisty little bastard. There was never a shift where you didn't recognize him in the AHL. Talent? Well, the guy had the heart, but there were just other guys ahead of him. Colin Smith, I had talked about a little before. You know what? The guy is tiny, but holy smokes, does he just put up points. It doesn't matter what line you put him on. And you can put him in all kinds of roles. But I think he's around 22, 23 years old, so he's starting to get to that what are you stage. And he's still pretty small. Doesn't look like he's going to be much bigger than that. This guy has prolific European score written all over him. He could go to Europe. 
probably go to the KHL. I can't remember which team has his rights now, but he can make millions. Now, do you want to do that, or do you want to play on, like, the Marlies' third line? Which, hey, maybe he still signs an NHL deal and plays for an AHL team, and this just wasn't the right fit. I don't know. But he could definitely go to Europe and crush it and really make some dough. Think Brandon Cozen. And who's to say he couldn't just make an almighty comeback when he lights the league up? Stuart Percy breaks my heart. Just by chance, I knew the guy who billeted him when he was in Mississauga, or at least one of the years he was in Mississauga, and this guy was such a huge Leaf fan. And I still remember his draft, and the Leafs traded a pick. It ended up being for John Michael Lyles. We're not going to talk about that. They traded a pick, and he's messaging me like, oh my, oh my god, which pick was it? What year? Because he knew the Leafs were interested, and he didn't want them to trade away a pick that could potentially be used on him. And then the Leafs pick him. Ah, oh, in jubilation. He's the captain of the Mississauga Steelheads. No no big deal. He gets crushed from behind a couple times. Starts off in the Leafs organization. He's not looking so bad. Manages to make the Leafs and oh, here, why not? Just throw him up on the first pairing with Dion Phaneuf. And he actually looked pretty good for that little stint, didn't he? You all remember. But then, and Kyle Dubas admitted this at the time, maybe he was just protecting his guys, but he did say this. He regrets how Stuart Percy was handled all the yo-yoing. Of course, it didn't help that he got crushed from behind a few more times. All of a sudden, the Leafs draft these defensemen. Andrew Nielsen's looking great. Travis Dermis looking great. We're not Valiev and he's getting passed up. I thought the departure of Scott Harrington might have helped Percy's case. Apparently it didn't. All right, so let's take Stefan Robida out of the equation because, hello. Oh, let's add Frankie Corrado and Martin Marincin to the equation because let's assume the Leafs are going to re-sign those guys that they gave qualifying offers to. Add Dermott if he is not sent back to junior. Add Renat Valiev and add Victor Love. Add Andrew Nielsen. Again, that's another guy who, if he's not sent back to junior. And Connor Carrick. So there's 13 guys if both Dermott and Nielsen stick, and that's not even counting some of the overagers they drafted and any guys that they sign. It's, there's a lot still going on. And I don't think the Leafs are in full-on tank mode, but if they're clearly not in a playoff position by the trade deadline, I would expect Matt Hunwick to get dealt. It's still such a crazy, incomplete work, the Leafs. And that can be fun, but yeah, it's also really frustrating because it's June and it's almost July and I just want to know. Well, life's not fair, is it? You should know that. You're a Leaf fan. So... What do you think of the Kirby Reichel trade? What do you think of the guys that the Leafs qualified? What do you think about the guys who they didn't? And what do you think is next? Don't even get me started with that Stamco stuff. We got plenty of time still. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. Brand new Panicle Pizza, Steve Dangle Podcast coming up. Justin Fisher is going to co-host. Reporter Chris Johnson is going to call in. And every time I do this, I try to see how fast I can say it. And I screw it up. I don't know why I do it. I should just slow it down and talk to you like a person. I'm really sorry.